Good morning, everybody. This is Casey Krolchek on Across Campus with KUPS, The Sound. I've got two wonderful guests today here with me. I've got Riccardo Frisardi. He's an international student from Italy. And I've also got Sam Jenkins, an international student from Melbourne, Australia. And so... This is, a, this is a show that's really going to strike home with me because I was an international student. Uh, my junior year of high school, I went with Rotary International to Switzerland. And it's, it's just one of those experiences that changes the course of your life, changes who you are, and more or less just helps you find out who you are and who you want to be. And so it's a, it's, it's a big deal to study abroad, so I'm excited to have these two guys on the show. So I'm going to welcome Ricardo first. We're going to start with you. So... Ricardo, great to have you on the show today. Thank you, Casey. All right, so we're just going to start out getting to know who you are. Uh, so tell us about where you're from, man. Like, Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm from Italy, like he said it all. Uh, I'm living in um, Sicily, which is like the island in the south. And uh, I studied abroad when I was 16. It's my third out of fifth, five years, I guess, in high school. And um, I just... Decided to go to China. I studied with AFS, which is um, an American field service, which is like a thing very similar to um, Rotary International. Yeah, I, w I went abroad with Rotary International, so that was yeah. Uh, yeah, met we, a lot of AF kids out there. We have a Rotary International in Italy. It's just like a very small program, I think. But um, I left with AFS, and the way you do it, they make you choose like top three countries that you want to go to. And my first three choices were China, Russia, and the United States. And I ended up going to China. And like, I mean, Sicily, my town is like um, super hot in the summer it's like around 120 degrees or so every summer and Sound, then, sounds really rough i'm guessing know, right? tacoma and the rest of tacoma, north america is really is really feeling for you there but you got them. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. No, but like i went to this place in china i was like um up in the north closer to like the russia border there was to beijing and um and that city is like harbin it's like a six million people, 6 million inhabitants is like huge. And it was 100 degrees in the summer and minus 40 degrees in the winter. So it was super cold and like, yeah, you wouldn't want to get out of your house. Like, and it would start being like super cold, like minus 10. It would be minus 10, I think, in like end of September, early October. So it was pretty tough. <laughs> I, I know the feeling being from Minnesota and, all, Minnesota and all, so. But yeah, like that, that Chinese experience, like I... I know it must have left a big, huge impression on you, and I know that it left a big impression on others because l last last year when I was starting to work with the international club, I did a lot of work with Sally Springer, and she said as I was getting this club together, yeah, Casey, you've got you've got to talk to Ricardo. Mm -hmm. Like met the, I, I met this guy like as he was a, as as he was going through the college application process, and he was an exchange student in China, you know. But everything from I've heard from him, wonderful experience. You've got to talk with him about it. And so I would love to hear some more of the details with that. Like, Sally's just way too nice. <laughs> I mean, she was um, pretty much the reason for which I am here today. I came to Puget Sound the year, my senior year of high school to like um, visit you know, the college. I visited um, a bunch of others. I came to the United States for a week, and I stayed here for like two days. And... Um, Pretty much she was here, you know, like, welcoming me and, like, su being super awesome and super welcoming, super warm, like, feeling. I don't know. She was uh, just very, uh, very nice to me. And the f feeling that, like, um, I had being an international student coming here was just um, so... I just... I felt like I, it was home for me, so I decided to apply here, and I ended up, like, you know, getting in. So I decided to, you know, come here instead of... All the other, you know, universities I applied to, there are not that many anyway. So, but uh, <laughs> she's she's awesome. I mean, and my experience in China was was tough at the beginning and tough at the end, but it was just awesome. One of those things that you like. Um, it's definitely been the best year of my life, um, hands down. And it was tough to like, you know, get there, go abroad, and like, and you probably know about this, like, study yeah. in, in like live in a different family that is not yours for like a year. And those guys don't get paid, at least with AFS, they don't get paid. So they like they want to do it because, you know, they actually believe that there's um, something good in like, you know, international exchange. And my family, like my host brother couldn't speak a word of English, or at least he thought he could. And I thought I could speak English. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's funny. That's the funny part. Because like, um, you know, for the whole like first week, we were like walking around and we were, you know, talking to each other in, Ch in English because I couldn't definitely couldn't speak Chinese back then. And uh, it was funny because I was like asking him questions such as, you know, what time are we going back home? 
and he would not, not understand. And I would have to say it four times, and he would not understand. And then he would ask me to spell him, spell you know, spell it. So W H A, you know, blah blah blah. And then we'd say, oh, oh, okay, 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 seven. But I did not hear seven. I heard something else every time. <laughs> so I had no idea what he was saying. And yeah, I would have him spell the numbers too. It was just like one of those awful things, like you know. Yeah, I I know that kind of perpetual feeling of not really knowing what is going on at all. You just kind of spend hours and days at a time kind of floating around like, all right, I'm, go I'm going today to day to day. If they wait, if they wave at me, if people get upset, then I need to, need to start changing what I'm doing. <laughs> exactly. No, pretty much. And it's also like, um, I mean, like studying in a, you know, country that has a different language, it's um, tough, but only study, also like, you know, studying in a place that doesn't really have a good, let's say, um, you know, English speaking skills, it's even tougher. Um, um, but at the same time, it's like when you have once you have the love of family that is not yours, but it's showing like the fact that they are happy to have you there, even not with even though it's not with words, but you know like with things that they do and questions that they ask you and being curious about it. And it's like always gives you the um, you know strength to go on because you're like you know those guys actually you know I don't know believe in me or like I'm at their house and I'm not being a thing and they're being super nice. So yeah, and like I. I really, I, I relate to that too because I, I had a, spe I had a spectacular host family when I was in Switzerland, and normally with Rotary they would give you two or three host families, and then they can each kind of like split up the time that they have with you. It's not, a, you're not as much of a burden to the family. But I actually just had the one host family, and I, I almost thought that was like even more spectacular. There wasn't this feeling that I was just going to be passed on to the next family, like if I became a problem. So it was, it felt a lot more like I was part. Of that foreign family, rather yeah, rather yeah. than just like <laughs> look, feeling like I was moving on and just getting through it, you really have to like learn to hash out different problems. That like in, normally you're only used to dealing with stuff like that, like family problems in the context of your own family. Exactly. But when you're placed in a totally different country in a totally different family, uh, that really forces you to rethink your your body language, the way that you're going to approach the problem, and everything that that like goes into that and and you can't really comprehend how much that takes until you find yourself in, in a in an argument with your with your host sister or you're trying to negotiate uh <laughs> weekend plans with your with your host parents but no it's it's very it's very tough and if you have to like add on that the fact that you have to go to high school i don't know if, if it was the same for you with uh, you know with uh, router club but with afs day we have to attend high school in a foreign country and they would want me, obviously, you know, to speak Chinese because they, you know, not the math professor couldn't speak a word of English, you know, and, they, and when I was in class and they were having a test and all, you know, the test, even though it was math, right, we think that math is all numbers, but apparently it's not in China <laughs> because I had to take a test and like out of the like whole page, there were probably like 15 and 20 numbers in a math test. So it was pretty, pretty hard. Um, it was, it was, you know, like it was fun though, because like if you were doing something like this and you know you chose to do it and nobody put you in that position, nobody asked you to, um, then if it's the harder it is, the, like, the, the more um, into it you get because you know that if you get through it, then, you know, you just, wow, you just got through it. You're, you know, like in China when you were, you were 16 years old and, like, you know, and... Oh, it's, it's, it's so funny to look back at photos of myself and I, I can't for the life of me understand why my parents, with how I looked and... That just just the straight up age that I was. You know, I was I was also sixteen when I when I first left. And you look at those photos of yourself and you think, God, that guy looks so young. Why would you ever stick him on a plane and put like send him across to the other side of the ocean? I mean, for you, for, for you, I, I, I mean, same thing. For you. I guess you weren't really crossing an ocean, but yeah. a lot a lot of landmass. Yeah. But still, that counts. No, it's 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 just like one of those experiences here. Like you either love. Or even if you don't love, you look back with like respect, like you were like, you know, I studied abroad for, you know, a year or like a month or like a semester or whatever. Studying abroad is like an experience by itself. You don't need to have it like, you know, long time. It will still be awesome. Plus the fact that you did it yourself, you know, it's going to make you the least look back at it and say, wow, you know, I miss those times or, you know, because it's also the age in which you do it is like the time in your life where you change him or like when you're about to change or we just, you know finish you know growing up or something like that you know it depends on people but it's just it happens also at a time that is um for me at least you know it's critical because you just kind of think you just kind of like got used to your life at home 
and you just start to grow up for me at least you know I was like okay so uh, so I know now how it how it is and how I'm supposed to do things and now bam they pick you up from your habitat and they bring you to a totally different environment and they expect you to like all of a sudden you know survive there you go I mean but it's it is like a great experience and definitely worth it Nah, you're preaching to the choir, man. I definitely feel for you. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Across Campus with Casey Krolchek and our two guests, Ricardo Frisardi and Sam Jenkins on 90.1 KUPS, The Sound. All right, we're back on Across Campus. I'm your host, Casey Krolchek. We're moving on to, the se to another segment of our show. We just talked with Ricardo Frisardi from Palermo, Italy. And now I've got Sam Jenkins from Melbourne, Australia. Sam, great to have you on the show today. Thanks for having me, Casey. Yeah, so we'll go through kind of the same thing that I was going through with Ricardo. Like, love to like have you tell the listeners where, where you're from and uh, what it's what it's like there. So I was uh, I was born and raised in uh, Melbourne, Australia, and uh, I moved to Portland, Oregon when I was 17, and that was uh, I guess the start of my senior year in Australia, but. I'm going to say it's right up to spring break junior year over here. So a little bit of change. We run on a, a different school schedule. But uh, it was definitely a fun move. And uh, my mom was born in Tacoma, raised in uh, Hoquiam. And my dad was born in England, raised in Sydney, Australia. So I guess they met in Australia. And I was, me and my sister were both born there. So from, from you know, all my life I've been a dual citizen, Australian and U.S., Well, all your life you're going to be a logger, too, so <laughs> yeah. you're going to have to add that to your set of identities there. Yeah, so, like, tell me more about, like, what, what, is, what, what is Melbourne like? Like, if you, if you could compare it to Tacoma, like, what would, you, what would your average day in Melbourne look like versus an average day here on the Puget Sound campus? The, uh, the way I feel about Melbourne, it actually, to me, feels a lot like the Pacific Northwest. And that you know you got really uh, laid back attitudes, and the people are really nice. That's so, funny because we we have the impression that it's a lot warmer there, and it <laughs> rains less. I mean but. that's that's true. I mean you can you can compare a lot of the weather and just say you know it doesn't get quite as cold and it doesn't rain quite as much. But then I guess it doesn't rain quite as much anywhere else ever. So. <laughs> kind of hard. It's kind kind of harsh, I guess, to try and make that comparison. Yeah. But well, I mean, we were, still, we're in drought for you know most of my life, so. This much rain takes some getting used to, but in Portland, Oregon is, you know, kind of the same way. Never stops for like nine months of the year. <laughs> oh, gosh, don't we love living in this part of the world? <laughs> And you get used to it. Yeah, for sure. I know what you mean. Uh, so, yeah, tell me more about, like, how you got to here. Like, you, to you told me that you, were, that you had to think about universities and colleges And you kind of had to choose between the Australian system versus the American system. So what, what, what was that difference, and how did you decide where you, where you were going to go with that? So the, uh, the Australian system is <clears throat> much more based on uh, the way it runs in the U.K., and uh, the way that kind of works is your grades through your senior year of high school and your exit exams from high school are what counts in the end going to university. So, you know, you don't take interviews, you don't take all these campus visits, and you don't even apply to a school, you apply for a course at a particular university. And the issue with that for me was that, you know, I have to choose at age 17 what I want to study for the next four years and, you know, make a potentially life-altering decision into, you know, what I want to be educated in and what I want my university degree to be in. And I really like the notion of liberal arts in that I can study a broader range of things And, you know, for the, the time I'm spending in university, I feel like I'd get a lot more out of it. And on top of that, my, uh, my mom did the same thing here. She was in liberal arts. And, uh, you know, she had the same impression that you'd come out really well-rounded for your education. Yeah, for sure. I, I remember there, there, was a, there was a similar system in Switzerland. Like, I would talk with a lot of my classmates. And for the most part, like, uh, what would be the equivalent of our middle school ages? That's when... The selection process process really starts. It depends on the kind of potential you're showing, your testing, how you're doing in school, and what your te what your teachers think of you. And so, beginning in middle school and beginning of high school, you have to, they start sorting out students into students that are go going to go to 
Kantonschule and other students that are going to go to well, Kantonschule would be the high school equivalent for us, like where you're studying full time. And then the the alternative is a school that kind of combines uh, studying in high school, but also adds in an internship to that. And so there's both an academic and a practical uh, side to your education there. But yeah, that, it, it's it's interesting because we don't have that in the United States, and we don't have that process where we really start to choose like, so are you going to are you going to go to college? Are you going to study in this field or that field? Or are you going to take something that's much more general and something that'll allow you to fit into many different fields? And Americans generally tend to be, oh, you'll you'll figure out your your major, you'll 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 probably end up in some field that has nothing to do with that, and that's fine. But yeah, that's an that's an interest, interesting system, and it really shapes uh, where we where we end up. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest things for me was that you know at, at age seventeen, when I would have had to be choosing my university courses, and you know I could. have chose from a couple but i have no idea what i want to do with the rest of my life like not even a clue you know let alone what i want to major in so uh, i can get used to something like this yeah yeah it definitely <laughs> feels good to be a logger <laughs> so you said your mom is from tacoma did that have an influence on you choosing puget sound as a school or were you just kind of looking at the northwest in general i think it did i mean i've got family still up around the northwest and my grandma's really close by so I was always just looking at Northwest schools mainly because I think you know I'm far enough away from home in Australia it make more sense to be around family yeah. in the Northwest so from Portland I was, it was just Washington and Oregon schools and uh, you know I visited here really liked it and then on top of that my grandpa uh, is an alumni he came here f I'm gonna say 51 okay so that you know that was part of it yeah well <laughs> Well, every, for everybody that's listening, this is it's it's fun for me to talk to Sam because I'm I'm the RA on the second floor of Todd Fibs, and Sam is one of my residents, and so it's it's really fun for me to get to know a resident like his life story, where he's coming from, and then it kind of, it kind of helps to draw the hallway together. But uh, you know, what, what's it been like f for you? Like a accent accent stands out. People people notice it. People love it. Well, I mean, people people miss it a lot more than you think. You can sit down and have a conversation with someone and. We go for a while before they ask, wait, wait, do you have an accent? Or <laughs> sometimes sometimes they won't say a thing at all, and someone will bring it up later, and they'll be like, wait, what? Yeah, well, there are enough kind of quirky, weird people mm -hmm. in the Northwest that might just speak with an Australian accent, simply for the sake of speaking with an Australian accent. But and what, I, what I love about college here is that you've got people from all over the country, so you've got all these different American accents, which yeah, is yeah. always fun to hear. So, you know. Great yeah, my accents. if I, I I have a fun anecdotal story to add on to the whole accents theme. My my bro, my brother goes to the University of Montana in Missoula, and he was telling me about how they have they had they had an Australian exchange student who who was going there for the year, and it was fun when they when they're out at at, at at football games or if they're out at night, and you know he's introducing himself to girls and they'd say, your accent it's not it's not getting it's not getting us. You're not going to trick us with that. Nice try. He goes, you're right. You know, I'm from I'm from Kentucky, and my mistake. Sorry, I won't uh, won't try to trick you with that one again. <laughs> we, we actually had a guy uh, uh, from one of our classes completely convince a girl here that he was English, and he kept it going for a solid 10, 15 minutes, and we're all just cracking up laughing, and she has no idea. Yeah, you don't go too far with that because <laughs> a Adrian also got me with that. So, okay. yeah, not just the girls. <laughs> He's pretty good at it. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, so what, what have you been up to here at the university so far? Uh, well, I'm playing rugby here, so that's a lot of fun. I, uh, I guess we play our first game this Saturday. And uh, I find that kind of funny because, you know, it's big in Australia, but I never actually played before I came to the States. So I played a bit <laughs> in Portland and then I played here, but that's something new to me. So that, that's a lot of fun, and it's a good group of guys. Yeah, I knew a South African exchange student who came to Minnesota for his exchange year, kind of with the, through the same program that Ricardo and I did, like that that high school exchange, and he wasn't much of he wasn't much of a rugby player in South Africa, but when he got here and started hitting up the hitting up the gym, that kind of became like his thing, and by the end of the year, he was the state MVP, and ended up getting I, I th either close to a full ride or a full ride to Cutstown in Pennsylvania. But yeah, that's I mean. 
something that'll like flip around your life. Uh, it's kind of, kind of a fun story there, but yeah, Puget, Puget Sound did or did not recruit you to nope. come and turn around the, the no. rugby program here. Nah. I mean, rugby's a club thing, so you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's all people who came here and then decided, hey, it'd be fun to play rugby. I, I tried playing football in Portland, but uh, that's not really something you can really easily get into your senior year of high school. Yeah, for sure. We're going to take another quick break. You're listening to Across Campus on KUPS 90.1, The Sound. All right, we're back on Across Campus. I'm your host, Casey Krolchek. We are doing a show th- this this morning about international students here on the Puget Sound campus. We have Ricardo Ferrizardi and Sam Jenkins. And so I'm going I'm to keep going with my questions. I have Ricardo up to the mic here. And uh, I guess I'm wondering like, if, if you have any interesting situations where it has definitely stood out that you are the international student in the room. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, number one, thank you again for getting me here. Um, no problem, it's been man. Awesome. You, 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 <laughs> guys, you guys are the ones that make the show. So, <laughs> number two, I mean, um, as much as I try to hide the accent, because you know, like I, I, I kind of try and speak like it is, because that's how like my Italian <laughs> speaks. But like, I try to hide that so that I sound more, at least, um, you know professionalizing and you know people actually listen to me otherwise they would just laugh and that's it but it's really it's really it's really like hard to hide to hide you know like the the little you know the smallest of like you know things that I'm not, i cannot hear but apparently other people can but other than that there's the whole thing that like you know in italy when you study english in high school um you study british english so you know how the difference we don't obviously learn the accent because that would be impossible but what we learn are the words you know the whole flat and apartment lift oh, yeah, the elevator there you know. are different expressions exactly. different mannerisms you, and one of them that um has given me problems the first very first day of college was um rubber so <laughs> yeah i mean like when you are in class i, I see where this is going i mean I like no no it's uh, i was my first day of classes you know i just got my backpack you know looking all like trying to look sniffy go to class i was super excited about my first class in college first day of college and i get to class and like you know i'm used to like taking notes with a pencil and that day i forgot my eraser or as we you know call it in italy in europe because we learn british english i forgot my rubber so I got in class, and I sat next to this very, very pretty girl. She was there. I did not put her there. She was sitting next to me. And um, the professor just starting writes, writing, starts to write stuff on the, on the blackboard, and I'm taking notes with my pencil. And then she, like, erases something on the, on the blackboard and then, like, you know, puts in something else. And I was like, all right, so now I have to, you know, like, erase this thing too. And I have to, but I look around, and I don't have my eraser. So I asked for, you know, like, to the girl next to me, hey there, uh, can I borrow uh, rubber? And she just looked at me, like, you know, with the weirdest look ever on her face. And I was like, um, I, I just, no, I mean, like, just rubber. I can see you have one, you know. Was on. She had, like, you know, an eraser on the table. And I was like, can I just, you know, like, borrow that, um, you know, rubber for a second? I'll give it back to you when I'm done. Like, you know, no worries. And it was, you know, the most, the most awkward thing ever, because, like, you know, like, you don't realize that you're talking about that, but at the same time, the girl knows nothing. But... I don't have one, and <laughs> if I did, I wouldn't give it to you. Yeah, no. So... <laughs> no, and it was, and it was funny, because I could see her eraser on the table, so I <laughs> Come on, like I can see you. You have it. I mean, don't like. I'm just gonna borrow it for a second, and when I'm done, I swear to God, I'll give it back to you. <laughs> and it got pretty weird until like, and I was asking her like, you know, like um, you know, like um, I was asking her, I was talking to her, and then after after she wouldn't, you know, like said that she didn't have one, I kind of like you know got mad like why you know why the heck wouldn't she give me the thing? It's on the table. I can see it. Like it's, it's and then I started apparently like I raised my voice, and um, the professor turned around because you know like you have someone in class that like come on, just let me borrow your rubber. And, you know, it's like an American class, and professor turns around and says, you know, what the heck is going on? She looks at me. Luckily for me, she was um, she's from Ireland, so she knew what I was talking about, and she just started laughing, <laughs> you know, and she, I just like, please help me out. I don't know what's going wrong and what, what is wrong, you know. And please she, tell me what yeah, is happening right now. Yeah, no, no, it was pretty awkward. The professor was like, Ricardo, I think you want to call it Eraser. And um, then we just had a conversation after that because... I had just realized that <laughs> it was just like one of like you know the um, silliest mistakes ever. But I didn't mean to do that, you know. Just as you know, it just happens, you know, because like you learn a different kind of English. I mean, no, to us we think it's you know English is English. You know, there's no like such thing as difference. And I would have never thought that in a you know English-speaking country I would have such you know like 
um, I guess failing <laughs> yeah. attempt <clears throat> struggling for like for over like an eraser or a rubber. So I was it was pretty tough. I I ran into some really awkward situations when I was an exchange student when uh, in, in German you either refer to somebody like informally as du or you or formally as Z. And if if you're talking with somebody that you don't know, somebody that's older than you, or especially a teacher or a professor, you always use Z formal. Yep, same in Italy. Yeah, and so that was something that I, like, it didn't even make sense in my mind because we've only got you for everybody from all walks of life in English. And there would be times where I, I would see, where I'd see a teacher and say something about, oh, hey, how are you, do how are you doing today? Or, what, are, or what, what do you want me to do? And I would use the informal form, and the teacher would tense up and kind of look down at me and... Uh, yeah, I would just make some sort of snide comment or be, have kind of an angry, res or angry response, and I'd kind of be it's a whole saying, culture, huh? "Yeah, and I, I'd be standing there, kind of going like, what's your deal, dude?'" And, but yeah, and then I'd, I'd have students like say, "You didn't use Z." So it, if I could equate it to something here, it'd be like walking up to your professor on the first day of class and going, <laughs> "Sup, G," <laughs> and just like that sort of reaction that they would give you, like. What what's your problem? What's your problem? Who who are yeah, you? It's, uh, it's one of those things that when like um I remember my um I mean like I think the whole philosophy even like in college I'd say it's pretty chill. People like to be comfortable. I mean like it's a campus. We don't really have campuses in Italy. Not many of them at all. Um, if you know we have. But um, it's funny because, like, you know, you see people on um, everyday basis, and they're, it's their house, too, you know, so they live here, too. And I remember the first day, no, it was, like, the longest day ever. But anyways, the first day, right after this, thing, like, pretty funky thing, I went to another class. And I was, I mean, like, um, I was, back then, I still like to dress up, like, um, like to have, like, you know, my Italian style behind me. I just lost that, unluckily. But uh, <laughs> it's, I just go to class, and I was wearing, you know, like, a long pants and a shirt, and this, you know, girl was wearing pajamas. And I was like, wait, is she wearing pajamas in class? Can you even do that? And, you know, apparently, you know, it's just like, it's chill, I guess. That's the word, you guys. It's like, you know, it's like, very comfortable. It's your house. I get out of the bed. I get out of the bed, you know, brush my teeth, brush my face, and just get to class on my pajamas. It would be kind of weird if you asked me, but... um. I mean, I can see how, you know, why it is comfortable, and I actually have to say that I started wearing, you know, like, um, um, you know, how do you say that, I call it, so, um, shorts and, like, um... Flippy floppies. Flippy floppies all around, <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, um, all the... Um, train, not, not, uh, I forgot the word, but, like, you know, long pants and try to be comfortable instead of looking good, and and that's also, that's always been, you know, kind of weird for me to look at, but then I was like, you know, it's, it's from my house, and I get up in the morning, and I go to class, and, you know, never, I actually never, you know, wore a pajama to class before, but it's just been a pretty fun experience, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, and it's not just in the classroom that <clears throat> your identity as an international student and that element of, your, of yourself comes into play. Like, Sam, what have you encountered outside of class, like just in these first couple of weeks at the school? Yeah, one of the things <clears throat> that I noticed is, you know, the professors don't really touch on it that much, but, you know, outside, I guess, like, Ricardo, our, um, our English, I guess, technically it's considered Australian English, but uh, definitely much closer to the British, you know, penal colony and all that. But, uh, you know, the, the one that amused me the most is talking about flip-flops. We don't call them that. They're called thongs. So... <laughs> And if, I, if I'm talking about wearing thongs, that gets some odd looks. They might think you're wearing two pairs of underwear. Yeah, if I, if I say that, and then you get the look like, wait, what did you say? <laughs> like, dude, I don't, I, don't, I don't need to know about that. But, you know, that's, that's always fun. And what, what about in rugby? Do they expect you to be the mastermind, the strategist, coming from the... Probably, I, I would go ahead and say it's it's the superior rugby country, even though we the United States does have the one gold medal that ever was in rugby. So yeah, well, I mean, you know, we beat you a couple of days ago, but uh, no, I, I <laughs> no know, not I, not much to argue there. I just want to point out one of our one of our <laughs> one of our many successes back in the day. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I guess at first the impression is you know he's he's Australian, he knows what he's doing, but not at all. Like I had no clue. Yeah. And what's what's fun is that our coaches. He's a Kiwi, so he's from New Zealand, and you know they're our traditional rivals in uh, in rugby. 
you know, being so close and, and also being such a strong nation. So that's kind of fun. And, I, you know, I guess my name, there's, you know, a bunch of Sams there, so everyone just calls me Aussie. And, it's, you know, it's, it's funny. And, uh, you know, World Cup going on right now, that's always fun. There's always some trash talk that can, that can happen. For sure. And do you, do, you, do you enjoy that title? Is it something you relish? or? I, you know, it's, it's just something you get used to. And it's not, it's not a, like a, a hateful thing at all. It's, you know, a little endearing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's always fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, no problems with the coach, though. He's not cutting your playing time on the basis that you come from <laughs> no, that, the bigger be, island. Uh, <laughs> more due to the fact that I still need to learn to pass to the left, but that'll come. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. We're going to take another quick break. You're listening to Across Campus on KUPS The Sound. All right, we're back on Across Campus. I'm your host, Casey Krolchek. We're doing a show about international students here at the University of Puget Sound. I have Riccardo Frisadi from Italy and Sam Jenkins from Australia here on the show today. So it's been great so far. We've got 15 more minutes before we have to wrap things up. So I'm turning back to Riccardo now. Riccardo, I would love to know more about where you're going after this. You're kind of nearing the end of your Puget Sound career. Yeah, don't remind me that. <laughs> if it was up to me, I would stay here probably five more years. I don't know, it's like socially unacceptable, but whatever. It's it's fun. God, the, the restrictions like, society places on us, it can be, it can be <laughs> really right. rough. A university says as long as you pay, you can stay, but uh, <laughs> no, one, no one wants to see a, like an eighth, eighth year senior or something like that, so it's always bad. But no, I mean, like, um, as I um, said before, so I studied abroad in China, and that one year got me like almost fluent in the language Mandarin, Mandarin Chinese, and now I have like conversational fluency because I try to keep going there every summer. Um, but um, so, and I'm a Chinese major, and business just because they sound good together. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, no, like where I would love to see myself in the future, I would probably want to like go abroad and again, you know, to China and start working there, just because it's been the best year of my life, and I associate the country now with like happiness kind of thing. I know it sounds yeah. pretty silly, but um, also, it's, um, um, I can see myself, I mean, I'm on a visa, obviously, um, because, um, my as family is from Italy, and I don't yeah. own any kind of, like, you know, housing in the United States, so I would have to go back home after, um, after, you know, like, my college experience is done, gotcha. but, um, at the same time, I'd be happy to go home, I mean, like, my town is, like, one of the most beautiful places in the south of Italy, and it's like, you know, why would you... And it's amazing, because you're living in a place, you call a place home, but that place is, you know, a place that people would pay to go to. So it's it's pretty awesome, yeah. And I can see myself, um, you know, in the not... Definitely not in, you know, not near future, I guess, living in Italy um, and just have family there, or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Even though it's, I guess it's still a little early to talk about that, but... Um, it's but, within it's within the realm of possibility. No, definitely. I would really love. I actually, I'm actually planning like you know, um, working abroad as much as I can until like you know, I get myself, let's say, financially independent, and then just go back home and and just stay home. You know, I mean, that's. Um, I love traveling like everyone, right? Yeah, yeah. And I love actually um, living in places <laughs> instead of more like going as a tourist. So um, going to China for me would be the thing to do like my kind of like you know dream for the future kind of thing i would love to go there and work and, and is, uh, is there a specific spot in china or an industry that you want to be working in i mean um i wouldn't say so the city doesn't really matter the place but like um i'd say you know like my dad is like this little business that i guess is, it's very you know humble but you know like i guess good enough to pay for college and um it's you know it's I would probably love to do the same thing so that I can, you know, because family business, you don't, you feel very sad if you don't, you know, keep them, you know, you know, keep, I, I mean, like, I would love to say that I'm seeing myself in a couple of years just, you know, helping my dad out and, like, working with him mm -hmm. and that, and, you know, I guess there's always space for some, um, for, for making money in China, so, at least, so far, so, it's going to be fun, and I would really love to get there and start working there. Yeah, I, uh, my, we have, we have a family business as well, so... My parents have mentioned that to me, like it's a, it's an option that we can explore if that's something that I was interested in. But yeah, I, I've always loved my parents because they've given me, they've uh, always made it totally known that I'm completely free to pursue what I'm interested in and what I'm lo what I love. So 
I'm glad, like, it's really cool that you're looking out, outside of Italy, China, and looking just to get out there for a while. But uh, yeah, I. No, I mean, really definitely to... after college, you're like, you know, I just spent some of the four most fun slash frustrating slash, you know, like, um, tough years of my life because, you know, at college you got to study, but you also have need to have fun. That's part of it. Uh, and you just, sometimes you're just not ready to get out, you know, so. Yeah, um, for sure. I hope that won't be my case, but we'll, well see, right? I've got just under three years on my sentence still, so. I get to I get to soak it up for a bit longer. Sam is a is a freshman here at Puget Sound. Uh so you you kind of said before that you don't know exactly what you want to do or what you want to major in, but you know like, if you could base it on like why you came here, like what what do you want to try and find? What do you want to get out of your time here at Puget Sound? I, you know, once again liberal arts, you know, I want to get the most out of it I can and you know learn as much as I can and become I guess more well-rounded, but I definitely see myself in some kind of social sciences area. Okay. And I mean right now I'm taking a comparative politics class and that <clears throat> that's definitely, you know, something I'm interested in, political science and also Japanese. So I guess what I love is that, you know, I don't have to choose yet and I have so many possibilities within that area. But obviously, you know, I've still got four years to go, so I could be doing something entirely different by then. Because, you know, this definitely isn't what I had my heart set on four years ago. So we'll see. Gotcha. Uh, I took I took a comparative politics class last semester with Patrick O'Neill, and it's one of those eye-opening, spectacular <laughs> classes. If you are if you're an international student or if you just want to travel, that is a class that you must take. So, everybody, freshmen, junior, fr freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, take a comparative politics class. As soon as you get outside of the United States, this class is going to make like it's going to help you interpret everything that you're seeing and enhance any experience that you have abroad. So I would really encourage students to get into that. And that, if any class, is probably the one that the whole being foreign thing comes in the most because we talk about, you know, international relations stuff and different systems of government. You know, I can relate to a lot of that. Well, yeah, and the, the, enti the entire idea of the class uh, is to think outside of the box as far as being an American, being, you know, for, for the most part, we only think about our government and we interpret the rest of the world through our own lens and through our own paradigm but the goal of the class is really to expand that to look at things from something other than than an american standpoint whether that's academic or whether that's from an iranian point of view or a chinese or a south african point of view yeah, definitely it, it pushes you to try and understand and it like through from that perspective the focus of that is definitely very very global mm -hmm. and I, I think that's really important yeah for sure and i, th I th I mean, I really value having first just student a diverse student population, and international students especially. As far as just like geographic location and the way that you view things, it is it's enhanced. It helps it helps you understand things better if you can see things from multiple perspectives. But after I got back from Switzerland, I felt like I could I could see everything from from that second or third point of view. And then when you're surrounded by people who are completely different from you. Uh, it gives you that way of looking at something that you normally never would have had. And so that, that's why I really appreciate those students who are coming from different countries and from different backgrounds, because they can see something in a way that I just can't. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, very cool. Were there um, anything else you wanted to add on as an international student? Messages you wanted to get out to the student population? Ricardo, I can call you up in that as well. <laughs> I guess nothing, nothing pressing, but you know, people here have been really good, and everyone's you know really accommodating and accepting. So it's not like it's been a difficult process at all. You know, really friendly people. It's been a lot of fun. All right, well that's awesome. How about you, Ricardo? Any messages for the Puget Sound student population? And I'm, I'm pretty sure we have listeners right now in Switzerland and Kashmir as well. So we've got a national as well as international population. That's listening in. So I forgot to tell my parents about this. <laughs> they oh man! This too. I wanted I wanted Italians listening <laughs> on this man. No, I mean, um, I really, uh, I don't know. I guess what do you guys say? Like, um, keep living it up. I don't know. Like once, I feel like once you get out of college, like that's when life starts. So everyone should not look forward to get out of here because when then when you're out of here, you realize how much you just want to be in here and have you know. You'd rather pay money to stay in a place and study instead of like having to go out and like you know having to worry about. Paying, you know, either paying your debts, you know, or you know, just paying for having to do with the landlord and like and paying for utilities and like, it's I don't know. 
I really like this time here, and I wish I could stay here longer. <laughs> yeah, don't we all? That's going to be it for the show. Ricardo and Sam, I want to thank you both for being on the show today. It's been spectacular. Thank you very much, Casey. <laughs> love it. Casey. Yeah, love, I'm loving the show with each... Loving the show more with each passing week, so I'm having a really great time here. If you would like to be on the show or if you have a group that you want represented here on Across Campus, I encourage you to find me on Facebook. I have just put together a new page for the show, so you can like that. Send me a message if you want your group on there. I would lo love to get everybody on here. So, yeah, we'll be staying in touch. You are listening to Across Campus with Casey Krolchik on KUPS 90.1, The Sound.